Hello, I have here the Lego Icons Corvette, classic Corvette. I paid $150 US for this 150, and it comes with 1,210 pieces. I built the whole thing live over on my Twitch channel, which of course is linked in the video description. Now this obviously represents a C1 or first generation Corvette. However, there were a number of sub models within that first generation. And this one here specifically represents a 1961 model. If you are more used to the more curvy, rounded, maybe more classic styled one, and you notice some major design issues, things that just seem completely wrong with the design of this, especially up front and at the rear, make sure that you you're aware of specifically which model this is intended to represent. I personally far prefer the 1956 to 1957 models, which have a, a, a noticeably different front end, but that's not really relevant here. I think that Lego has done a good job of capturing the specific model this is supposed to be. In terms of the build, there are some nice part usages throughout this, but not a tremendous number of them. I feel like this in general was a much more traditional build overall. It felt much more uh, focused on just studs on top, you know, plates on top of plates on top of bricks and such construction from end to end. It had a very solid Technic brick based uh, frame that you put down first that is very, very low, very, very low profile. The entire build is much smaller or it feels a good deal smaller than most of the the vehicles in this line have to me up to this point, which which makes sense. You know, the, the Corvette is has never been a large car and the first one was not one of the uh, the largest of the line either. Overall, it felt like an efficient build. It felt like the appropriate number of parts were used. It felt like the amount of time that I put into the assembly here was well rewarded and appropriately rewarded with progress towards the final thing. The windscreen is a new element. It's the same piece used for the front and the back. And you'll notice that there are hardly any marks on it whatsoever. You have to look very, very carefully. And that's because thankfully Lego has gone back to actually protecting the windscreens. Each, each of these pieces, these very specialized and new pieces, came in its own little pouch, its own little, little paper pouch to protect it from scratches and, and damage. So hopefully they're not going to revert again. They already started at one point using plastic protectors. They reverted that and started just throwing the windscreens back in for maximum damage. Now they've gone back to the way that they should be doing it. Hopefully they will stay this time. These stripes right here are done with printed pieces. This whole entire logo, this entire large rounded piece here, is a printed part. Again, stripes over here, which includes a different piece, a different tile over here. So you got the two by four. It doesn't line up perfectly, but two by four, two by six, two by six. Uh, yeah, the alignment isn't isn't perfect, but it's not too far off this time. It's not as bad as it was with the the prints, the stripe prints on the Mustang. And then these jumper pieces, the two by two round jumpers, are printed behind the little teacup uh, saucer bits, which are done here in clear. So the silver is actually printed directly behind there, which makes for a really interesting look that if you don't recognize immediately exactly what the parts are, like I didn't when I first saw the uh, the reveal photos for this, it will make you think and wonder what the heck is going, what am I even looking at? So that was that was cool and 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 feels good. Got the gray banana here, you got the, the monkey kid wide hilt and then a, a candle piece here, the small uh, mini Cooper, fender used there to add some some shaping and then the sausage piece and just a light gray underneath that good you know good part usage there this is a printed piece right here that's a sticker but then for these little uh, little vent uh, horizontal bits there they just use some uh, different colors of, of plates inside this has a brand new arch piece right here which is a, a shape that they've not had exactly like that before and matching it underneath there's a brand new uh, curved piece. So this right here, which is a one by, it's a one by four by one and two thirds. Just a, a new shape that they haven't uh, had available, especially in, in one part before. It looks like I got just a little bit of part separation there. As you can see, the doors have hinges here and everything closes up very, very nicely. There's a slight little bit of gap in here, which isn't intentional, but all this opens and closes smoothly. 
There is an engine under here. You also see a little bit of steering. I'll show you more of that. But there is an engine under here. In order to get to that, because everything is so smooth here, the designer installed just a just a little cheat, and it's it's underneath here. It's underneath the the fender well. If I recall correctly, it's uh, on this side. Yeah, on this side. There's a there's a little spot where you can you can push a thing up that's connected to the engine. Actually, it's back back here. Where is it? Oh yeah, there it is right there. You'll see it once I open this up, but this just kind of cracks the hood or the bonnet up just a little bit to allow you to then pull this open. Nice detailing inside of there. Everything is fairly compact. It looks good, it feels good to me. This is drum lacquered silver here and the cheater piece that opens up the, the hood or the bonnet is a coffee mug in silver. I forget which component this represents on the actual engine but you're just pushing that up, which then pushes against this and, and gives it a little, little room to move, to move. But you can see the gear train for the steering is also there as well. And indeed, the steering is connected to the steering wheel on the inside. So that's all pretty nice. The uh, valve covers do have stickers used there. The matching color isn't perfect, but generally this is a pretty neat looking uh, space with not a whole lot of stuff that you don't want to see. It's another thing about this. So when this comes down, gotta slide it. Sorry about that. Slide it forward a little bit, and everything comes down fairly flush. This is the tiniest gap here, but you don't see like yellows and and uh, greens and other weird colors that you don't want to see on this. Thank goodness, right? Um, around the back, there's another situation. So Baraki eyes used here. But there's another situation where a lid is closed up very flush. There's another cheat for that and it's right here. So this is a kind of a free floating piece, but that allows you once again to just crack it open just a little bit. That is a sticker right there as well. But now this opens up and then also shifts back a bit to give it more room. And that's pretty realistic as well. And inside of there, nothing. It's nice and nice and smooth. It's dark red on the inside there. So everything is finished up pretty well. In spite of the fact that this doesn't even come with luggage or anything, doesn't really come with uh, anything to, you know, to make this usable space, but it's still just closed up nicely. And then put this back in properly, slide it there. And there we go. That's good. This has a removable hard top. This pops off just like that. That's it. So you get the two versions. I'll show you this plenty with this, with this off because I think it looks better with it off. But honestly, with the hardtop on, I think it looks much better in person than it did in the in the photos, the official photos. I think Lego uh, photography folks and renderers are not doing as good of a job these days as they as they should. I feel like they're selling short some of the some of the design work that's actually rather good. It's actually better than it appears. So here, this is a print. Once again, that's a sticker in there. You can see the, the color match between those. So prints on top, stickers here towards the front. You can try to align those a little bit. I really liked how these chairs uh, fit into the fit into the, uh, the little slots there. So you can see how that can be angled forward. And when this comes down, it just fits right in nice and nice and neat. The, the individual seats are a little bit small, I think. Level of detail inside of the driving compartment is not bad. Got, you know, appropriate appropriate enough level of detail, I think, but maybe just a little bit more greebling or another sticker or something could have helped a slight bit. But you've got the three individual pedals here. Just the first time that we've seen a color that we don't want to see, that tiny little bit of blue all the way up under there. It's actually okay because they repeat like wiring and stuff. Um, yeah, these are individually adjustable so you can set the levels of your pedals. You got a sticker there on the steering wheel and then the speedo old school style speedo is a sticker and then you got a sticker back here for the console gear shift lever is shown as well and a shift pattern sticker there but look at this in drop top configuration this looks so much better to me even though like i said the hard top top on version uh, or configuration looked better in or looks better in person to me than the pictures. This is still the best. And that's a really weird thing for me to be saying because I really don't like drop tops. I don't like convertibles. I want to see a full roof on a car to make it look like a complete car, generally speaking. But this 
is just right. This looks right to me. This feels right. I'm very happy with this. Happier still looking at it from a lower angle. The only thing that I really don't like about this, having it in person, is that you get too much camber, too much negative camber out of the, the front wheels. They just don't have enough stability there. The <laughs> Yeah, it's just a little bit a little bit loose in camera. You can't really go very positive, but you can definitely easily go negative, especially as you operate the steering, which actually might not be the most inaccurate thing. You know, the suspensions were very, very loose back in those days and geometries weren't all that great. I've not looked it up to see if that's accurate, but it's, it, I'm pretty sure it's not intended here. But this does still, I mean, even, even at that, let me go ahead and open up the, uh, open up all the panels for you so you can see this in its fully open glory. A lot of folks who are collectors of, of models like to see everything open at the same time, right? It's just a certain, certain display look to it. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, I'll, I'll let that be straight up. Give these a little bit more reasonable angles. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, even the undersides here don't have different colors. Yeah, it just, it really displays like a model. Go ahead and put this back on so you can see one other option for it as well. Uh, a little bit of feeling of uh, 300 SL there, unfortunately. Probably the greenhouse is a tiny bit too small. Maybe a half a stud more width would have been a little bit more appropriate uh, uh, proportion wise, but I think it's close enough. Really, honestly, any, anything here that is that is imperfect, proportion wise and shape wise, I feel is more than forgivable given the medium, the Lego brick medium that's used to, to construct this. These are the leftover parts, including a couple of extra license plate or registration plate options as is common. And though this set does have quite a number of prints, actually a few more than I even specifically pointed out, there are still quite a few stickers and some of those are pretty important. So again, I paid $150 US for this. It is 150 euros, 130 pounds UK, and $200 Canadian, which translates to about 151 US. That makes this the cheapest of the creator expert icons car in some number of years. Also has fewer pieces than most of the vehicles. In, in the line in recent years, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, when they first hit the $150 mark, I thought that that was the absolute max. That was as far as I was willing to go with it. This one's $150 today after a little bit more inflation, but it is a smaller car. It's smaller, um, has fewer pieces. Ideally, I'd love to see this, like this says 100 and in Lego, this says like 120 to me, tops, 120. I could see them asking 130. I wouldn't complain too much. So we're we're close. We're close <laughs> by modern standards. We're we're close enough. But you know, value is very 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 relative. Um, you know, different people get different things out of the build experience of Lego compared to getting a very nice, very accurate diecast model or something like that. Uh, so I have to rate this overall based on. It being a Lego model based on the build experience and based on just how I feel about it overall now that it's complete. And I really do feel good about it. I felt good throughout the build process. Again, there weren't a whole lot of tricky things along the way. It felt pretty straightforward in a good way. Uh, there was definitely a lot of just studs on top construction, which I like from time to time since we get so little of it these days, uh, but it was all for good purpose it just felt efficient right from the start building the the floor pan of it was so thin and flat but yet strong it just felt like it was going in a good direction right from the start like this is going to be an efficient construction um, overall it even has a lot of inverted tiles used on on the underside including the relatively new uh two by four inverted tile so yeah just it's just buttoned up nicely even with that hard top on that i didn't like in the pictures still looks pretty good though can't beat that in my opinion for this vehicle so all in all this is a weird video for me because i don't have much negative to say about this at all price you know as usual 
but as a set, even as something that I'm personally not in love with, the source material, and even though it's um, amongst these, amongst the C1 Corvettes, this is one of my least favorite on account of its face, still. The, as a Lego thing, I don't think I could ask for it to be better. I think it would be unreasonable for me to ask for it to be better, other than uh, chroming, which they don't do anymore. But, you know, drum lacquering, I suppose, would have been really nice for all of these pieces here. But that's about, that's about the worst thing here. They even protected the windscreens, again, like they're supposed to. <laughs> Has some stickers, but I wasn't too mad at those. Yeah, a little bit of camera issue, that's about it. So overall, doesn't feel like a balanced review from me, does it? It's because I just, I like the thing. I think it's just plain well done. Thank you for watching. I hope that this was of some value, whether you disagree or agree with my opinions about it. And I'll talk to you again soon.